What exactly is yogurt? And how is it made? The word yogurt comes from the Turkish word yogurmak, which means to thicken. There is evidence of cultured milk products being produced as food for at least 4,500 years. According to legend, yogurt was discovered in the 12th century in Turkey, and it was Turkish immigrants that first brought yogurt to North America in the 1700s. In 1908, the biologist Professor Eli Mechnikov won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. He is best known for his work on the beneficial health effects through the ingestion of living bacteria known as live active cultures. He believed that regular consumption of yogurt was responsible for the unusually long lifespans of Bulgarian peasants. Yogurt is basically a fermented dairy product made from milk. There are three types of yogurt based on their fat content before flavors are added. Full fat yogurt which is made from whole milk and has at least 2% milk fat. Low fat yogurt made from low fat or part skim milk and has between 1 half and 2% milk fat. And non fat yogurt made from skim milk and contains less than 1 half percent milk. The yogurt cultures are added to convert milk's natural sugars into lactic acid that transforms the fluid milk into a pudding custard like yogurt. These friendly digestive tract bacteria are Lactobacillus bulgaricus and Streptococcus thermophilus. They give the yogurt the desired taste and texture at <laughs> performed on the milk prior to unloading. Technicians conduct quality checks for smell, visual appearance, and to verify that the temperature is not greater than 45 degrees Fahrenheit. They test acidity levels to determine the age of the milk. And they also look to see if antibiotics are present and if water has been added. After the milk has passed this initial quality testing, it is unloaded and pre-pasteurized FDA pre-pasteurization requirements state that milk must be heated to a temperature of 161 degrees for 15 seconds. Pre-pasteurization kills undesirable bacteria by subjecting the milk to a high temperature for a short time. This is achieved with an HTST which stands for a high temperature short time heat exchanger comprised of a series of stainless steel plates along which different stages of preheating, final heating and cooling treatment take place. After the milk has been pre-pasteurized, it is spun in a centrifuge at over 4,000 revolutions per minute to separate the lighter cream from the heavier skim milk. Then, to increase milk solid levels in skim milk, evaporators are used to extract water. They create a vacuum that brings milk to a boil at a lower temperature. This prevents burning and promotes condensation for extraction. The extracted liquid is then referred to as cow water. Prior to batching, the tested, pre-pasteurized and separated milk is pumped into holding silos that are maintained at a temperature of approximately 40 degrees Fahrenheit until the milk is needed for the batching process. In the batching process, specific types of milk are mixed with dry ingredients according to predefined recipes for each final product. The new mixtures are recirculated and held in 6 to 12,000 gallon batch tanks until they are ready for transfer into the processing area. The addition of dry ingredients during batching means introducing raw ingredients after pre-pasteurization. So, before it can go to the processing stage, batched milk must be pasteurized again through HTST heat treatment. Although regulatory standards require minimum pasteurization temperatures of 166 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds, Danum exceeds these standards. 
After pasteurization, the batched milk is homogenized to break down fat globules in the milk into much smaller ones. This prevents the risk of forming cream lines in the product. To do this, a homogenizer forces milk through small passages at high velocity and under high pressure. Homogenization further mixes the dry ingredient additions from the batching process to assure that products will attain their desired taste and texture. And homogenization also gives the product a whiter appearance. To produce yogurt, bacteria cultures are carefully inserted into the manufacturing process. These cultures give the product its specific characteristics, such as acidity or pH, its flavor, aroma, and texture. Cultures are useful microorganisms, each one of them carrying out a different function in the product. After inoculation of the product with cultures, the fermentation process begins under carefully controlled conditions. The temperature of the milk must be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the optimum temperature for fermentation. As the cultures multiply, they feed on the lactose and generate lactic acid. This creates a drop in pH, which is a measure of acidity. As the pH drops, the casein proteins in the milk begin to coagulate. This coagulation thickens and develops the texture of the yogurt. Simultaneously, the culture strains for flavor development multiply and produce the characteristics for taste and aroma. For people who are lactose intolerant, yogurt can be easier to digest because the fermentation process reduces the amount of lactose.